Hello everyone, I am Ashley Blankton and this is the Campfire. Today we are taking a look at 23-6A. This district is strong at the top and should be a pretty tight race to the finish after realignment. Here's the teams that reside in 23-6A. Elsick, Hastings, Taylor, Alvin, Shadow Creek, Strake Jesuit, Pearland, and Dawson. The Sharks of Shadow Creek took the title last year, but Pearland brings in head coach BJ Gott from Katie Pato. Who is fresh off a 5A Division I state title? Should be interesting. Let's analyze the teams in this district in our film session. 13 returning starters for last year's district champs make Shadow Creek the odds on favorite to win back to back titles. With the coach's son, Duke Butler, still behind center, the offense could flex its muscles once again. Running back Tyleek Burton and Jacob Washington are also dangerous out of the backfield. Dawson played a lot of underclassmen last year, which means they are experienced vets in 2022. Colin Johnson at quarterback and Bryce Burgess at running back should stand out. Alif Taylor has one of the best returning quarterbacks in the district as well, and Chase Jenkins. The Lions also return seven starters on the defense. Pearland is looking to return to their glory days with new head coach BJ Gott. The Oilers will be an experience on defense, but Kennedy Lewis and Christian Pitts should help on the offense. Strike Jesuit missed out on the postseason last year, but with Bryce Fusick back as their signal caller, they should push for a spot this year. Fusick threw for 2,600 yards and 30 touchdowns a year ago. At Alvin, the Yellow Jackets will rely on running back Deshaun Peterson to help lead their flex bone offense. Hastings won only a game last year and will hope eight returning starters on offense will increase that win total. Elsick was winless in district play last year, but returned 17 starters and hope that experience will lead to victories. Now let's dig even deeper into 23-6A with Houston Chronicle reporter John Foreman and producer Ward Fasol in our district breakdown. All right, well, we are not joined by John Poorman this week because he's a little bit under the weather, but we do have our high school insider, uh, Joe McCann, join us, and he's going to talk a little 23-6A with us. Joe, talk to us about this district because they seem to have a plethora of experienced quarterbacks in, uh, coming back, probably more than any other of these Houston districts that we've talked about this this year. But can you talk about some of those guys and, and how their experience may, uh, may push them into the postseason? Yeah, well, you may see like a better quarterback in a district here and a district there. But as far as from top to bottom, this may be the deepest quarterback district in the Houston area and maybe one of the best quarterback districts in the state, to be quite honest with you. Uh, a lot of these guys we actually saw are going to be seen at our Houston quarterback challenge. Uh, coming up this year. So we've got a good look at a few of these guys. Shadow Creek's probably got one of the more noble guys in Duke Butler, coach's son. So uh, being a coach's son, you know he's uh, always going to be well prepared and, and has, brings that experience. 1,900 yards, 29 touchdowns last year as he led this team to an undefeated run through district play. Uh, Pearland Dawson is not, uh, their starter, Colin Johnson, is another guy uh, we got in touch with at the QB Challenge. Over 2,000 yards passing, 17 touchdowns for the Eagles. Last year, they went two rounds deep in the postseason. Alif Taylor, uh, maybe the best quarterback in the district, and Chase Jenkins, he had 2,500 yards passing last year, 24 uh, touchdowns, and just one pick. And when you see the one pick, you wonder, well, is this a guy who just dinks and dunks and throws five-yard passes? That's really not his style. He will take risks. He'll throw the ball deep, but it's calculated. So he's very smart with the ball, got great – placement on his deep passes he's not going to lose you games because he's not going to turn the ball over very much so he's uh he's a guy who's going to win you a bunch of games and then uh maybe an under the radar guy who i think you should watch out for this year straight jesuits bryce busick he's another guy we saw at the qb challenge looked good in that uh 2600 yards 30 touchdowns uh, for the crusaders last year they just missed the playoffs and i think uh, i think he's motivated to not only get his team in the playoffs but really show what he has for uh, college scouts this year and uh, so I, I think he's the guy who may be a little underrated statewide excellent well thanks for joining us joe and we will talk to you you or john next week <laughs> see you man The guys had much more to say on this district and you can catch the entire breakdown this Wednesday on our social media platforms. We've heard about the teams. Now let's take a look at some of the athletes to watch out for in our players on the rise. Alif Taylor quarterback Chase Jenkins is one of the most dynamic QBs in the district. The Bel Air Episcopal transfer through for over 2,500 yards, 24 touchdowns, and just one interception. That's right. Only one pick for Chase's junior. 
Jenkins is also very elusive, as he can make pass rushers look foolish if they aren't careful. Chase verbally committed to Rice. Another terrific quarterback in 23-6A is Shadow Creek's Duke Butler. The coach's son threw for almost 2,000 yards and 29 touchdowns for the Sharks as a junior. Butler has a strong arm and will be in his second full year as the Sharks starter as he won the District Offensive MVP award as a junior. Duke has some college offers but should see that list improve during his senior campaign. Strict Jesuit has a star in the making and tight end Chico Holt. As a junior, Holt developed into a weapon in the red zone as he caught 14 passes for 116 yards and three scores. But Holt's claim to fame is his ability to block in the running game. Chico has strong hands that aren't only good for bringing down catches, but sealing off gaps for his running backs. Holt verbally committed to Northwestern. On defense, Shadow Creek's Theorin Randall is a problem at defense. In. Randall finished last year with 42 tackles and five sacks as the Sharks went undefeated in district play. As a sophomore, Randall had 52 tackles and eight sacks. He can avoid blockers and terrorize ball carriers, which is what made him a must get for Washington State. And guess what? They got him. That Chase Jenkins from Aleve Taylor may be one of the best unsung quarterbacks in the state. Our word for sold got to talk to his head coach, Sean Gray, about the Lions' quest for back-to-back postseason appearances in our Media Day segment. All right, Media Day, we are talking 23-6A and joined by Aleve Taylor head coach, Sean Gray. Coach, you guys had a playoff squad last year, and it looks like you are bringing back some experience on the defensive side of the ball. Do you feel like that's where your strength's going to be defensively? I definitely feel like the, the defensive line is going to be the strength because that's where most of our returning starters are. Uh, they're getting a lot of experience as first-time starters as juniors. Um, we got Samuel Robles, who was an all-district defensive lineman returning. Uh, I'm excited for him. He had a great offseason, great spring. Uh, he actually has a couple of schools interested in him. So I'm really excited for him. I think he'll have a chance probably to make the biggest impact on the defense because of his experience and how he went through the offseason spring football. You talk about, we're talking about the defense, but obviously the player that everybody's got their eyes on is, is Chase Jenkins on the offensive side of the ball. And, and, the, and we can talk about the 2,500 yards, but the, the stat that jumps out at me is the one interception. When you know you've got a quarterback out there that's not going to turn that ball over, it's got to be a a good feeling as an offensive uh, head coach and coordinator for whoever your coordinator is. Well, you know, he, he, takes, he took a lot of pride in, you know, the one interception. And uh, I think that he does a great job of, of being precise and, you know, on what he wants to do. Um, I told him it's not, it's not okay. It's okay to throw more than one interception though. <laughs> it's okay. But uh, Chase is definitely, he's, he's probably by far one of the, I think he's one of the most talented athletes in the city, the greater Houston right now. Uh, I'm really excited for him. I think he, he just touched the surface last year. I think he'll be even better this year because uh, just because of his experience. Last year was his first time. It came in from private school, so this was his first time in uh, in six eight football, and he did well. He wound up, you know, being the first team all district quarterback. Thank you for talking with me, man. Good luck this year, and I'm hoping to see you back in the postseason. All right, appreciate it. You can hear the entire interview with Coach Gray this Friday on our social media platforms. That's going to do it for this week's show. Next week, we move into 24-6A. It's our last Houston area 6A district, and it features the clear ISD teams, Brazoswood and Dickinson. You can keep up with everything on the high school football scene on our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram accounts. Until next time, I am Ashley Billington, and thank you so much for watching the campfire.